Hello and welcome to TechLore. Today I want to share with you what I think are the most impressive applications from the F-Droid open source app store. Number three may surprise you. Just kidding. But I do think you'll really enjoy these apps. They're all pretty great. Traditionally, on an Android device, you're limited to just the Google Play Store. This is managed by Google and is home to predominantly closed source projects. Open source means the code is publicly available, empowering communities and keeping code transparent. If you want to learn more about open source and FOSS, as well as the benefits, especially related to privacy, I have a video on that. F-Droid can be obtained on just about any Android device by going to their website and installing their APK. F-Droid is home to only open source projects, and it's the go-to store you would use if you were using a device that doesn't support Google Play services, normally custom ROMs. As an example, if you just installed Graphene OS, a wonderful custom ROM, which I covered and you should definitely check out, the first thing you'd likely do is install F-Droid, or else you're just stuck with like a phone app and a messaging app and a browser. That's it. In general, I have to disagree with the open source fanboys here that there is a good open source alternative to everything. So this list will dive into the top five apps that I feel can directly compete, if not beat, the main alternatives offered from something like the Google Play Store. I also have three honorable mentions at the end because that's apparently how you do YouTube videos. App number five is ImagePipe, which is a photo sharing, compression, information, and metadata remover tool, all for images and more. The use cases for this are extremely extensive. First off, if you're short on cellular data and you send a lot of images, ImagePipe can convert like a five megabyte image into something less than 100 kilobytes, which if you send 40 images over the course of a month, would save you between 150 to 200 megabytes of data. Doing this is as simple as finding the image you want to share in your gallery, tapping share, letting it do its magic, then pressing the contact you want to share the image with. This is all preset based on your choices, which you can figure when you open the app. Similarly, this could be used to compress high quality images and save storage space locally on your device if you're short on storage and maybe have certain images that you just don't need that insane high quality for. Did I mention that when you do all of these image conversions, ImagePipe removes all the metadata associated with the image. So don't worry about sharing an image with a stranger that includes your GPS location of where you took the photograph so they can hunt you down and stalk you, all that fun stuff. ImagePipe supports more, including auto-rotating images, as well as cropping them and offering an easy way to modify image sizes. As a whole, this is an extremely powerful tool. I love it. Which, honestly, I feel is just unparalleled to anything I've seen on the Google Play Store. App number four is Habits. Habits is tied for my favorite user interface out of all apps on this list. It is simply gorgeous. If you're looking for a way to stay on top of things or to start building a new habit within your life, Habits makes this amazingly enjoyable. Like, they normally aren't, but they can be enjoyable with this app, and it's personally been a big help for myself. It makes tracking trends easy, you can set reminders, and overall, it strikes a great balance between features and simplicity. I really have no complaints about this app. There's even an amazing widget for the home screen that is extremely well implemented, so thumbs up. The third application is a pretty popular one, but I felt it's necessary to bring up anyway, and it is New Pipe. And this is personally the, the best YouTube alternative that I've seen, although it's not perfect. First, the playback. You can watch all videos. It supports all the standard shortcuts like double tapping to skip ahead and back. You gain access to all the same resolutions. You can fine tune playback speed, closed captions, and a couple more things that the YouTube app doesn't do within the player. Outside the video player, you get options like a pop-up video play to watch from any other app. This is super cool. You can do background audio only, which is great for audio-based content or music, like surveillance report. You can make your own local playlists, and you can download videos or audio from these videos offline with extreme ease. Once you're done watching a video, New Pipe has autoplay and recommended videos to play, just like YouTube does. In terms of watching your favorite content, you can subscribe within the app to your favorite channels, like us. You can even watch live streams and you'll still gain access to some things like YouTube's trending list. One complaint is the comment integration is not good. You won't see comment threads, just the mother comment, which admittedly is extremely frustrating 
when I see a very relatable question or answer <laughs> from something I had to deal with in the video, and it's obvious that there's missing context in that response to a comment, and then I have to pull up my laptop and actually look it up online. Something else, New Pipe is not just for YouTube. It's a SoundCloud alternative as well, and Media, CCC, and FrameTube. The latter two I just mentioned, admittedly, I'd never heard of them before making this video, so I'm not sure how many of you will actually use those, but they're there. Overall, I'm much happier using New Pipe on my phone instead of the traditional YouTube application. Yes, I can't log in and manage my YouTube channel or leave comments, but as simply a method of watching content, for me, it beats YouTube on almost all fronts. The second app is Transporter, which will offer public transportation networks in your area. Granted, not many areas are really supported yet. Once you download the map data, you can either allow Transporter your location data, or you can manually find a place, tap directions, and put a starting point, then <laughs> brava, you got a ton of different public transport options. You can set departure or arrival times, as well as your preferred means of transport. As someone who's been spoiled and never really had to use much public transportation in the past, and that doesn't want to use Google Maps, this gives me a lot of confidence that if I was lost in San Francisco, being chased by homeless people and being flung poop at, I could get home without paying for an Uber. And I very much enjoy this app and the confidence knowing that I could probably survive in San Francisco alone without getting mugged with this app. And the final app I have continually been impressed by, which ties habits in my book for the user interface, is Money Wallet. There are so many budgeting apps I've used from Google Play, and I ended up paying money for one of them, ironically. And I can say this directly competes with that paid option. Money Wallet has support for multiple accounts, making it easy to separate maybe an investment wallet from your main bank account. You can add transactions. Obviously, setting budgets is a breeze. Although, side note, please, ugh, devs, introduce recurring monthly budgets so I don't have to update the dates on these budgets every month. This is as simple as a settings toggle to reset the budget every month, and it's the only complaint I have with the app. It supports recurring transactions, bills, credit card payments, categories for all your purchases, excellent analytics tools to show where your money goes. You can add people to your transactions to prove to your SO how much money they actually cost you each month. And not to mention, this app has other tools like a calculator, unlike the iPad, tips, easy export to CSV, as well as an easy export and backup function, and so much more. I feel like I learn something new about this app every month. It's extremely extensive and performs super well. I have tried every budgeting app from Ftroid, and this was the only one that worked for my needs. That wraps up the top five, my friends. Before going into our three honorable mentions, I wanted to share Proton Mail, an easy way of securing your emails to your friends, family, and other sensitive emails that are possibly even work-related. It's built with your privacy in mind, and it's probably one of the best alternatives to Google for those of you looking to get away from them. They are recommended by Privacy Tools IO with an excellent track record. And if you sign up through our link below, part of your purchase will go back to our channel and support what we do at no additional cost to you. Not to mention, did you know ProtonMail is coming out with an Ftroid app soon? So yeah, hype. Our first honorable mention is KeePass DX, which in my opinion is like the first or second best KeePass client I've used on any of my devices. Although I will say I just recently tried Strongbox, so Strongbox is pretty cool on the iOS. Either way, KeePass DX is still a great app. For those who don't know, KeePass is an open source password manager that I would highly recommend everybody uses. I actually just made a guide to, I guess, demonstrate how it works. Our second honorable mention is Memetastic. Uh, what's a phone without a meme creation tool? Do you guys do anything? Um, Memetastic won't watermark your creation. There are no ads and it is extremely functional and shouldn't hold you back with most of your world changing memes, whatever you're doing. I felt this was a great improvement over most of the bloated apps you would find on the Google Play Store. So if you're a big memer, I would actually recommend just going with Memetastic from the Ftroid store because yeah, it's good. And finally, our last honorable mention goes to the VPNs that offer their own first party clients for Ftroid, two of which are free iVPN, Calyx, and RiseUp. Yes, OpenVPN is on Ftroid as well, but if you want provider-specific settings and features, those are the only three I know of that are on Ftroid, and they deserve a round of applause for going out of their way to publish their apps to Ftroid. Good job. And that was my list of apps I felt were amazing and arguably better than most alternatives you'd find on the Google Play Store. 
Did I miss something? If so, leave your favorite F-Droid apps below. Let's get a good list of your favorite apps so we can, I guess, just share with the world all your favorite applications. If you liked this kind of a video, make sure to let me know by giving it a like below. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to catch our future content. Like our security and privacy news, surveillance reports, go incognito, and other content just like this. And finally, thank you to our patrons who are all helping us out so much. Thank you. The community is growing like crazy. So yeah, welcome all the newbies. Thanks for watching this video and have a Lemuricious day.